Beautiful song. Thank you. Praise God for that song. You know, uh, there's a song. It's um, it's called "I Thirst." Have you ever? Have anybody ever heard? It? It's called "I Thirst." And one of the lines in it says, "He's the man." I can't remember the singer, but he goes, "I." He's, his Jesus is hanging on the cross, and he says, "I thirst." And it says, "Jesus thirst, yet he made the sea." Can you imagine that? Our Lord was hung on the cross, thirsty, yet he made the ocean. He made the seas. He made the rivers. But he says, I thirst. Our God loved us so much. Amen. Let's be in a spirit of prayer. Father, bless us that we would uh, do all things in accordance to your will. I pray that you would be with us, that you would send your Holy Spirit to, to be with us and to, to give us the information that we need to uh, go through these last days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God. Some folks may come to church for a blessing, and I understand that, but if we come to worship God, we're going to be blessed. The highest form of worship is not a prayer, it's not a song. The highest form of worship is when we study His Word, because that's how we, that's how we learn to hear God through His Word. He speaks to us through His Word. In Exodus 19, verse 5, He teaches us to listen. He says, Now therefore, or the Scripture says, as Moses penned it down, he says, now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me, for all the earth is mine. He says, you will be a treasure unto me above all people. So it's God who makes us special. In verse 6 it says, and, he, and ye shall be able... And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. This is uh, God speaking to Moses. And Moses went to the people and he says, And he called all the elders, this is verse 7, of the people, and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord had spoken... We will do. They had the right dependence. Wait, they had the wrong, they had the right words, but they had the wrong dependence. They were dependent on themselves to do what God wanted them to do. But it is not that, that's not how it works. God says, I will make you a special people. And whoever makes the promise has to supply the righteousness. Israel made their promise to God, so Israel had to supply their own righteousness. And if they would have allowed God to supply the righteousness, they would have not have gone through all the troubles that they are still going through today. Still getting used to this pad. So, God can teach us if we will listen. That's the name of my sermon today, is to listen. And that word obey is listen 
attentively. In chapter two of in chapter one of Second Peter, in verse twenty. says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. That means that we can't have our own opinions about Scripture or, you know, we can't say, well, this is what I think, this is what you think, this is what I believe, this is what you believe, and we'll just, you know, we'll just get along. But what it means when it says that there's no prophecy, no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretations if you read it the way it should be read, the scriptures, the scriptures interpret themselves. So we we don't we want divinity to interpret the scriptures for us. That's why it says in the next verse, it says, For the prophecy came not for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. says that for the prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost so God is speaking to us through the prophets now I want to ask this question which one of the uh, prophets is the greater light The, the, the prophets are not the greater light. God is the greater light. So, I hear this about the spirit of prophecy all the time. Is the lesser light pointing to the greater light? That's why I ask, which of the prophets is the greater light? There is no prophet with the greater light. God is the greater light. All the prophets are pointing to Scripture. They're pointing to God. Where did the scriptures come from? And we have the we have the answer in First Peter, excuse me, Second Peter, chapter one, verse twenty-one, when it says, "For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost." So the my scripture verse. That's why I use the scripture verse I used today. Amos 3 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing. And how much is nothing? It says he will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So in. Uh, the bulletin, I have, I have a reading on the back of the bulletin. And I put these in here every week. I, I, I do a lot of reading. And uh, I, I try to put in what, usually if, if it's a topic that I know that the uh, whoever's preaching that day is preaching, I'll try to come up with something that, that the preacher's talking about. And, to, and today, I was a preacher, so I knew what I was going to be talking about. So, you know, that, that's kind of kind of odd that I'm a, that I call myself a preacher because I was 20, 20, probably less than ten years, twelve years ago, somebody told me he was going to be preaching in an Adventist church. I said no, especially now, forty five years ago, when I was twenty, you wouldn't, you probably wouldn't catch me in a church unless I was trying to, to date some person that was in the church. That's, that's the reason I went to church when I was, when I was younger, it's a shame to say. But anyway, um, oh, by the way, Mary Jane, thank you for that story. And I, I think about the story um, about our country is one of the greatest countries that, that God has allowed to be on the face of planet Earth. 
Uh, it's the only free country. We have uh, what you would call, we have uh, religious freedoms that, that we don't, that they don't have in, it, in the rest of the world. If you uh, are in certain parts of the world, you have to, uh, you have to uh, worship how that country tells you you've got to worship. Like uh, in the Middle East, if you're caught with a Bible, you could be killed. You could lose your life. Uh, a lot of the com communist countries, they frown on Bibles now, but they're not as bad as it used to be. It used to be in all the communist countries. If, if you talked about anything religious, unless it was the government's religion, they, quit, they killed you or they threw you in jail. So our country, the United States, has given us uh, freedom of religion, freedom of conscience. And, you know, most of you, I shouldn't say, most of you understand, I mean, most of the older people, I'm not trying to call y'all old, because I'm, you know, I'm, if you're not, if I'm, I'm getting there too, so. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. But if you don't understand what freedom of religion is, you will understand it, I believe. In, in this country, you will understand freedom of conscience when you lose it. You want to, you don't under, we don't understand it the way we should. We don't understand most things until we lose them. And I believe that this country is headed, headed fast in that direction. We're going to lose our religious freedoms. It, 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 if you don't see it, then Lord bless you. It's, uh, I, I believe it's coming. So, be proud of our. Be proud of where our country came from. Our country was was the one that sent the missionaries into the world to, to spread the, the word of God. I mean, they came to this country and started up because of religious persecution uh, over in in, the, in what they call the mother country. Um, Anyway, be, be, uh, we, need, we should be proud of our, our veterans and, and, and those that have given their lives so that we would have this blessed freedom that we have today. The only reason I can be up here and talk like this is because that freedom is still open. And I hope that you, we don't ever have to live to that day to where it's going to happen to where we're going to lose this freedom. But like I said, I believe that we are. Now, in saying what I said about the lesser light pointing to the greater light, I'd like to read a little bit from uh, First Selected Messages. And there, there, there's so much to read, and I, can't, I just can't read it all. But the things that we have, like uh, on the road to Emmaus, if you don't understand the road to Emmaus, that's, that's the night after the crucifixion. Two disciples of Jesus are walking on the road and a third man comes up and joins them. And that third man is Jesus and these two disciples don't recognize him. And Jesus is talking about uh, the plan of salvation. And, they're, 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 and they're, they're, they're burning inside because what he's saying makes sense. But they, they didn't understand that Jesus had to go to the cross and die. And he's explaining all this to them because they, their minds are, are, are mixed up because of, of what has been taught from, by the Pharisees and by and what their personal beliefs were for Scripture. And I believe that we're back at that point again in this time. We are, we are, we're back to where we were... Reading the scriptures, we have all this. We have all these scriptures, and uh, we have our opinions are mixed in with the scriptures. And what is going to bring us back to the scriptures? As far as I can see, and far as I can tell, is the Holy Spirit is using the spirit of prophecy to bring us back around to what the scriptures actually say. There are forty. I think there's almost 45,000 Christian denominations in the world. There's only, out of the 45,000 Christian denominations in the world, and I say this because I believe the spirit of prophecy. I, they didn't say there's 40. This, is, this comes from secular news that there's 45,000 Christian denominations. But 
I believe from reading the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, there's only one church, one, and, and I, I've only got one finger up, one church that has the truth. One. And that is the Seventh-day Adventist church. But right now, the way it seems, we're going in a, in a direction to where God is starting to use the evangelicals to bring His truth to the world. He's waiting for us. to. He, we have all His truth. And I just want to read just a little bit from the Spirit of Prophecy. This is from First Selected Messages, page 27. It says, When I went to Colorado, I was so burdened for you that in my weakness I wrote many pages to be read at your camp meeting. Weak and trembling, I arose at 3 o'clock in the morning to write to you. God was speaking through clay. She's speaking about herself. You might, and I want to point that out, God is speaking through her. You might say that this communication was only a letter. And I've heard that said out of you, out of, out of people in, in, the, in this church. It says, you might say that this communication was only a letter. Yes, it was a letter, but prompted by the Spirit of God to bring before you, to bring before your minds things that had been shown to me. In these letters which I write in the testimonies I bear, I am presenting to you that which the Lord presented to me. I do not write one article in, pa in the paper. I'll repeat that. I do, I do not write one article in the paper expressing merely my ideas. They are what God has opened to me in vision, the precious rays of light shining from the throne. Early in my youth, I was asked several times, Are you a prophet? I have ever responded, I am the Lord's messenger. I know that many have called me a prophet, but I have made no claim to this title. My Savior declared me to be His messenger. And He says, Your work, He instructed me, is to bear my word. Strange things will arise, and in your youth, I set you apart to bear the message to the erring ones. That's me and you. To carry the word before unbelievers and with pen and voice to reprove from the word actions that are not right. Exhort from the word. It's from the Bible. I will make my word open to you. He's talking to her. So I will make my word open to you. It shall not be as a strange language. In true eloquence of simplicity, with voice and pen, the messages that I give shall be heard from one who has never learned in the, school, in the schools. We know, most of us know, that she only graduated in third grade. My spirit and my power shall be with you. Whose spirit are we talking about here? Who's talking to her? If you believe in the spirit of prophecy, who's talking to her? It says... Be not afraid of man. And this is this really bowled me over several years ago. And I, I, that's why I'm such a stickler for, for the uh, spirit of prophecy. But be not afraid of man, for my shield shall protect you. It is not you that speaketh. It is the Lord that giveth messages of warning and reproof. Never deviate from the truth under any circumstances. Give the light. I shall give you. Is this whose light is this? God's light. If you believe in the spirit of prophecy, the messages from these last days shall be written in books and shall stand immortalized. What is immortal? To testify against those who have once rejoiced in the light, but who have been led to give it up because of seductive influences of evil. all I'll say about that for now. I want to change gears just a little bit. Let's go to 1 John.
chapter 2. And I want to start off at verse 1. My little children, these things I write unto you that you sin not. This is John the, the Revelator. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And He is the propitiation for our sins, and not ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know Him. Why? If we keep His commandments. And He saith, I know Him. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth this his word in him, verily, is the love God of God perfected. Hereby we know <clears throat> that we know, hereby know we that we are in him. How do we know that we are in him? He just told us in the verses before. If we keep his commandments. He that saith he abideth in him all, himself also, so to walk, even as he walked. So, how are we to walk? As Jesus walked. And by whose power do we do we do we uh, do we walk? Now, I, I picked this out and I picked it up. And I never did read it. Now we can go back to it. In the first, second, the, the second paragraph, you see the uh, uh, the bowl type, and I like to read. I like to read these when there's non. I like to read this when there's non-Trinitarians around. Where, if you're an Adventist, and I say this, knowing that there are, there are ad people in our church that don't believe in the Trinity, but if you're an Adventist, you believe in the Trinity. Sin could be resisted and overcome only through the mighty agency of the third person of the Godhead. The what person of the Godhead? So I, is that third? Does that mean there's three? Who would come with no modified energy, but in the fullness of divine power, it is the Spirit that makes effectual what has been wrought out by the world's Redeemer. So when we're walking this walk, that we walk, who are we walking it with? Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit. So who's, it's not our power. It's His power. It is by the Spirit that the heart is made what? Pure. Pure. Through the Spirit, the believer becomes a partaker of what? Divine nature. Divine nature. So how are we going to be overcomers? Through the divine nature. So, God, in His omniscience, knowing everything, knew that human beings could never live a perfect life. He knew we couldn't do it. We still can't do it. But, it says... Who is the power that comes into us? Is Satan have more power than, than God? No. So, I hear people say that, that we can't live without sinning, so Satan's power is more powerful than God's power? So if we allow the Holy Spirit in us, whose power is, is are, are we living by? The Holy Spirit. Through the Spirit, the believer becomes a partaker of the divine nature. Christ has given His Spirit as a divine power to overcome all heredity. How many? All heredity. All, excuse me. All hereditary and cultivated tendencies to evil. And to impress His own character upon His church. Amen. Amen. Folks, we can't do it. 
without the Holy Spirit. You know, it's, it's, it, I, in, in this part of, I, I can't put everything in, the, in this bullet. <laughs> I think I'd like to sometimes. That, that the, uh, without the power of the Holy Spirit, the, the, uh, the crucifixion would have been of no avail. Without the Holy Spirit, Christ's crucifixion would mean nothing. And Christ loved us so much that He knew in advance before He even created Adam and Eve that we could not do this by ourselves. And that's why He gave us the promise of a Holy Spirit. Because without, a Holy, without the Holy Spirit, Christ says in John 15, 5, you can do nothing. And I believe that's taking in oxygen our hearts beating. We are dependent on God's creation from the beginning. He breathed the breath of life, or as I like to say, lives. He believed all of us into Adam when He created Adam. It says in, John, in uh, Acts 17, 26 that we all came from one blood. Check it out. We did. We all came from one blood. We all bleed red blood. I mean, is anybody out there got green blood going out of it? I don't think so, and I don't mean to uh, tell jokes in the fall, but I said I would never do that again. Be careful about never saying never. But I like to laugh. Anyway, I want to get off my point here. We need God, and... God is our reward forever. But you know, on the other side of that, we are His reward. Amen. I mean, when you go to the grocery store and you purchase a product, you plan on leaving with that product, don't you? I mean, you're not going to leave it sitting on the counter. Just leave your money. Well, God is the same way. We are His purchased product. He is not going to leave us in this condition. Amen. But He is in the business of perfecting us now before He comes. Amen. You're not perfecting yourselves. Don't not, do not misunderstand me. We're, we, and I just, we, we just looked into that. The Holy Spirit is our perfecter. And I want to go just a little bit further. Let's look at... Um, Verse 27 of 1 John chapter 2, it says, But the anointing which you have received of Him abideth in you, and you need not any man to teach you. I think that's an incredible statement. And I think Paul really proves it because Paul was taught by who directly? By Jesus directly. The Holy Spirit can teach us. Without, it says... But the anointing which you have received, past tense, of Him abideth in you. So if Christ is in us, it says in Corinthians that we have the mind of Christ. You need not any man to teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it had taught you, ye shall abide in Him. Praise God. And in chapter 3 it says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God, the sons and daughters of God. What a tremendous... I mean, it's, to be called the sons and daughters of God is... You know, there's not, I, can't, I don't even have words for it. Of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we shall when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. We need the Holy Spirit. 
Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. <laughs>